All kinds of monsters now live among people, and we need to keep an eye on them. Some of them blend in pretty well, so you need to keep your eyes wide open to recognize them. Yeah. Okay, here's the first pair. Can you tell which of them is a ghost? Well, look, this dude has left footprints, so that's definitely not him, but the other guy. Next up, a vampire. Can you figure out which person at the party it is? It's this dude. He doesn't cast a shadow, unlike everyone else. Here are two girls. Can you figure out which of them is a werewolf? The lady on the left has hairy legs, but it's not a crime. Meanwhile, the right lady has left some scratches on the wall because she's the werewolf. Jennifer and uh -oh. Emma want to get into an exclusive nightclub. Unfortunately, not everyone is welcome. At the entrance, security is asking for a password. Can you help uh -oh. them figure out what the password is? Pay attention to the guy's shirt. Those symbols should mean something. A B, an A, a rock, and a star. B, a rock star, must be the password. Esme was walking in a forest, and guess what? She got lost. After a bit of walking around, she found the house of her old friend, the witch. <laughs> she pet the cat and asked the witch to take her home. As always, the witch had a riddle for Esme. The answer is in your head before you even think of it. It may lead you to the wrong answers, but it is itself ultimately correct. So uh -oh. what is it? Of course, that's a brain! A clothes store manager noticed that some things had started to disappear. Uh -oh. At first, he thought it was a mistake, but the problem persisted for months, and he invested in security cameras. After a half a year, he reviewed the footage. Can you take a look at it and figure out what's been happening to the clothes? Look at this pregnant lady with a big belly. In half a year, she would have already given birth. But she keeps showing up like this, which probably means that the belly is fake, and she uses it to steal clothes. Taylor was craving her favorite cookies that were only sold in one particular store outside the town. She was going to work, but her boyfriend had a day off, and she asked him to go get the cookies for her. When she came home, the cookies weren't there. Taylor's boyfriend said that the cookies had been sold out by the time he'd made it there. Taylor knew that he hadn't left the house. How did she figure it out? The store is outside town, so her boyfriend would have to go by car. But the car is covered in snow, just like it was uh -oh. when she was leaving which means that he didn't use it. On Wednesday, a high school student, Margot, went missing. She left after the first lesson, feeling sick, and didn't make it home. There are three suspects, Mrs. Adams, the director, Mr. Jones, the janitor, and Mrs. Smith, a school cook. Mrs. Adams said, Margot's mother called me, and I gave the girl permission to leave. Mr. Jones said, I'm not exactly sure what Margot looks like. Mrs. Smith reported, I saw the girl at lunch. She looked quite ill and only got a yogurt. Who should be taken for further interrogation? Ah. 
Mrs. Smith, the cook. Oh, no. Margot left after the first lesson, so she couldn't be there at lunch. In a parallel universe, it was only allowed to have fun and eat candy. No one ever read or studied. Mrs. Rellum came back home after a long and fun day at a club. Her three daughters were supposed to have fun too. When the woman returned, she noticed that someone had done some gardening instead. Hannah said, I was watching movies all day. Elle said, I went camping with friends. Ava said, I was in my room playing Uno. Mrs. Rellum could tell that one of her daughters was lying. Who was it? It was Ava. She oh, would no. need someone to play Uno with. She couldn't do it by herself. Now let's take a small break and test your attention. Look, here's a ball and three cups. I'll put the ball here in the cup on the very left. Your task is to watch the ball and then tell me where the ball is. Let's go. So, where's the ball? Look, it's here. Did you get it right? Let's do it again. Now I have four cups and I'll be moving faster. I put the ball right here. Watch it. So where do you think it is? It's in this cup. And let's make it almost impossible and see if you can get it now. Five cups. So watch closely. What's your bet? It's right here. Great job. At sunset, Sadie was walking along the beach and found a bottle with a message inside. Can you help her figure out the cipher? This cipher was first used by Julius Caesar, so it's called a Caesar box. To decipher the message, you need to divide the code into five groups of five and rearrange them vertically, like this. And now you just need to read it vertically, column by column. Allison, a mom of three, came back home after a long day at work and went to the uh -oh. kitchen to make dinner. Well, someone had already had one, a chocolate paste sandwich. See those breadcrumbs and some chocolate on the knife? Her daughters knew that no sweet snacks were allowed before dinner. So Allison went upstairs and found her three daughters doing homework. Can you tell which of them ate the chocolate paste sandwich? It's this girl with chocolate stains on her shirt. While Mr. Coleman, a rich gentleman, was on vacation, his mansion got robbed. The security was notified and a detective started the investigation. All the people who had been to the house were interrogated. Jack, Mr. Coleman's best friend and business partner, reported that he had visited the house a couple of times to pick up the mail and get a couple of important documents from his office. John, the gardener, said that he had come every week to take care of the garden. Ben, the cleaner, said that he had come every Wednesday to clean the house. The detective took fingerprints of each of the suspects, as well as some fingerprints from Mr. Coleman's office. Take a good look at them and try to figure out who should be arrested. As you see, all three kinds of fingerprints were found in the office. But while Jack and Ben had a reason to be there, the gardener did not. So, he must be the thief.
Violet, Rose, Scarlet, and Hazel are best friends hanging out at a party. The four of them wear dresses of respective colors, but none of them wears the color reflected in her name. They study economics, English, chemistry, and medicine. Can you figure out which dress each of them is wearing? Here's some available information. Scarlet is younger than both the girl in pink and the one studying English. The girl in pink, the girl in red, and Hazel speak Spanish. The economic student, who is not Rose, is engaged to the brother of the girl in purple. The English student and the girl in purple love coffee. The girl studying economics, the girl studying medicine, and the girl in pink live on the same street. Okay, here's the solution. Hazel doesn't wear hazel because that's the color of her name. We also know that she can't be the girl in pink or red, so she's wearing purple. Now, from statements 1 and 5, we know that the girl in pink doesn't study English, economics, or medicine. So, she studies chemistry. Now, the girl in purple doesn't study economics or English. So then, she studies medicine. Rose isn't an economics student and also can't study chemistry because she isn't wearing pink. Ah, and Violet can't study medicine because it's the subject the girl in purple studies. Scarlet doesn't wear pink and doesn't study English. So Scarlet wears hazel, then Rose wears red, and Violet wears pink. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Anna went on vacation to Hawaii and stayed at a luxury hotel. The hotel manager told her that they had only three empty rooms left. Anna could choose the room she liked best. Can you help her make a wise choice? There's no mosquito net on the window in the second room, and something's wrong with the door handle in the third room. So, Anna should choose the first room. Anna went to the hotel swimming pool. She spotted three odd details in the area right away. Can you see them too? There's no ladder in the pool. There are two suns in the sky, and this guy is sunbathing in a winter coat. After lunch, Anna decided to go on a boat trip. At the pier, she met three sailors. Bob offered her a three-hour sailing and fishing trip for $10 only. Kyle offered Anna a personal diving class for $200. And Daniela offered to have a boat trip around the coastal cliffs for free. But only one of these offers is actually a good deal. Can you guess which one? Kyle's offer is overpriced. Look at the poster hanging at the pier. It advertises personal diving classes for $20. And Daniela's offer isn't safe. Her boat has a broken bottom. That's why Anna should accept Bob's offer. Anna woke up on a deserted island in the middle of a hot day. The sun was shining very bright, so she needed to find a water source as soon as possible. There's the sea nearby, but she can't drink salty water. She found an abandoned cabin that contained some really handy items. Two empty paint cans, one large and one small, a roll of aluminum foil, one baseball, an old pair of sneakers, and some other useful things. Which one of these additional items can Anna use to combine with the previous items to obtain drinking water? A book? A handful of tiny pebbles or a plastic bag? The book is useless in this context. The pebbles can be found all over the shore. As for the plastic bag, Anna can fill one half of the larger paint can with seawater, then put the smaller can inside of it. Next, she should use the laces from the sneakers to pull the plastic bag tight over the large can. And finally, place the baseball on top of the plastic bag 
directly above the smaller can to make a small indentation. Then, just leave this construction in the sun. Drinking water will evaporate and condense on the plastic bag. The indentation will push the water into the smaller paint can. Anna decided to explore the island. Soon, she found a tunnel and got lost inside it. At the bottom of the tunnel, Anna saw three pits leading to freedom. But, unfortunately, every pit is hiding some danger. A huge squid is hiding in the first pit. There's a hungry hyena in the second pit. And there's a poisonous porcupine hiding on the third path. Can you help Anna choose the safest way to escape? Anna should choose the pit with the squid. They can't live in conditions that differ from the marine habitat. Therefore, she should wait for a while. The squid will get weaker and she'll be able to escape safely. Anna got hungry and went to the jungle to find some food. But she's not alone here. Can you find any hidden animals in this picture? There are six animals in the jungle. Here they are, a butterfly, an alligator, a rabbit, a camel, a snake, and a deer. Finally, Anna found three bushes with berries. They all look delicious, but only one of them is safe to eat. Can you help Anna make the right choice? She should take a look at the monkeys. They stay away from the first bush because it's a mutant plant. See? It has teeth and emanates toxic gases. Meanwhile, the monkeys enjoy berries from the second and third bushes. But a cobra is hiding under the third bush. So the second bush is the safest choice. Anna got sunburned during her walk. Which item from the cabin can she use to cool down? Aluminum foil? Fresh water from the paint can? or the sponge with some seawater. The sponge with salty water will only make it worse for Anna's irritated skin. And the drinking water is too precious to waste on bathing. Meanwhile, metallic foil is a great tool to cool down a shelter. Anna can cover the roof and the cabin walls and deflect some of the sun's heat. The next day, Anna continued her travel around the island and came across an abandoned village. She found a car with the keys still in it. The car was parked outside the local library, but before Anna could do something about it, a nearby volcano erupted. She didn't see any signs of glowing red lava, but a huge cloud of black smoke was moving towards her. It'll reach the place where Anna's standing in a minute. What should she do? 1. Head down to the library's basement, which is filled with vampire bats. 2. Take the stairs to the library's roof and hide there. Or, take the car and try to ride away. Volcanic dust is very hot and moves at high speed. Anna cannot either outrun the dust or hide from the clouds on the roof. So the safest option is to lock herself in the basement with creepy bat neighbors. In the basement, Anna noticed a big wall clock. It happened when the minute and hour hand was precisely between 1 and 2. She saw that both hands lay on top of each other. Can you guess what the time was? Twelve o'clock. Both minute and hour hands lay exactly between the number 1 and 2 in the middle of the number 12. Anna looked around and found a secret passage in the basement. She entered the passage and fell into a subterranean river, which carried her away to a large waterfall and then to a much bigger river surrounded by rocky cave walls. She tried to swim away, but the force of the waterfall had created a reverse current, pulling her backwards with an intense force. Anna needs to act fast. What would you suggest? Swim onward through the crashing water, swim to the side and try to climb the walls, or dive as deep as possible and then swim out of the waterfall's pull.
Swimming onward isn't an option. The current will pull her back anyway. The chances of directly overcoming the forces of the water are zero. But if Anna goes downward as deep as possible where the water current is not so strong, she still has a good chance to escape. As soon as Anna got outside, she met a wicked witch. She offered Anna a deal. You need to run one of these three tunnels colored red, blue, and yellow. Two of them lead to a black hole, while another leads to your hotel room. Listen to my clues very carefully. Choose the reed and you won't disappear. It's a lie to say that blue isn't dissimilar. The yellow doesn't have less in common with the red than the blue. Can you help Anna make the right choice? The witch said that the red tunnel won't not make her disappear, which means that Anna will disappear. So we can exclude the red one, and the yellow doesn't have less in common with the red than the blue, which means that the yellow does have more in common with the red. So now we can exclude the yellow one as well. Anna should choose the blue tunnel. The royal family of Ravania were going to visit the city during their world trip, and, of course, they were all bringing their precious crowns with them. They asked the mayor of the city to take special precautions. Thank you. So, he placed the crowns in a safe in a hidden room in his office, guarded by a couple of security officers. <laughs> However, the next morning, when the mayor came to check on the crowns to report to the royal family that they were safe, he started panicking. Can you guess why? It's because the crowns inside the safe are not the real ones. The first crown has a price tag on it. The second crown is broken. And one of the gemstones on the third crown is missing. Oh no! That wouldn't happen if it was the real thing. The mayor wanted to make sure that whoever had stolen the crowns was caught. He also hoped the police would find them before the media learned about what had happened. And the only person who could help him was Detective Zelda. So, he immediately called her. The detective arrived at his office and inspected the secret room. She noticed something that might help her with her investigation. Can you figure out what it is? There's a piece of paper under one of the fake crowns. The thief left a note. Detective Zelda read it. Hmm. Dear Maya, I'm very disappointed in you. This accident has proved how inept you are at providing comfort and security for your guests, as well as your citizens. I believe I can be convinced to give the crowns back if you pay me a large, and I mean it, sum of money. Mark my words and count on what I say in my letter on this matter. Here is my contact number. 19.1-1.3-9.1 and 13.3-1.2-6.3-9.1. Yours truly, the Riddling Man. What can you make of this number? Well, the mayor thought it was a phone number. He immediately took his phone and dialed the number. But, just as Detective Zelda suspected, no one answered. In one of the last sentences of his letter, the riddling man underlined mark, words, count, and letter. That must be a hint. The number before the dot indicates which word you should look for in the note, and the number after the dot tells you which letter you need in that word. For example, 19.1 means you need to find the 19th word, which is comfort. The letter you need is the first one, which is C. When you do that for every number, you'll get Cafe West. Before Detective Zelda left for the cafe, she decided to check the security camera footage recorded at night. The mayor took her to the surveillance room. There were three different monitors, each showing the room from different angles. Detective Zelda realized only one of them was still recording live. Hmm. The other two were showing fake images. Which recording is real and why?
Do you remember what the room looked like when Detective Zelda was inspecting it? The clock certainly wasn't on this wall. It was on the opposite one, so the footage on the first monitor is fake. The footage on the second monitor isn't real also. If you look closer, you'll see a moth flying around the room, but it repeats the same movement over and over again. That's badly edited fake footage, so it makes the footage from the third monitor the real one. Oh, yeah. Detective Zelda rewound the footage and found the moment when the riddling man had broken into the room. He was covering his face, so it was impossible to tell what he looked like. Still, Detective Zelda managed to notice something that could help her find the criminal. Can you tell what it is? If you look at the lower left corner, You'll see someone walk into the room and leave it quickly while the riddling man is stealing the crowns. Could that mean that the riddling man has a partner? To find that out, Detective Zelda questioned all the security guards who had been working the night shift. The first guard, George, said that he'd been keeping watch in front of the door. The only time he left his place was when he took a short bathroom break. The second guard, Joe, said he'd been standing in front of the door to the mayor's office all night, and the only person who took a break was George. Hmm. The third guard, Brian, said he'd been right there by the door as well. Hmm. Hmm. Detective Zelda knew only one of them was telling the truth, and the other two were lying. Who is the liar? Do you remember what the shoes of the man who entered the room looked like? White sneakers, and that's what Brian is wearing. So he's lying. And since Joe didn't mention that Brian had left his place, he's a liar too. Uh George is the only one who's telling the truth. Ciao. Brian and Joe immediately started begging Zelda. We can't end up in jail. We promised we didn't steal anything. You have to believe us, Detective Zelda asked. Then why did you lie? They said that they had heard some noise coming from the room while George was away. They decided that Brian would check the room and Joe would keep watch. When Brian saw someone in the room, he got scared and ran out of there. He told Joe that he would rather lose his job than have something bad happen to him. As for Joe, he lied because Brian was his best friend and he didn't want him to get fired. And since they never saw anyone enter or exit the room, they thought they were imagining things. After all, they were very tired. What do you think Zelda can do to check if the guards are telling the truth? She can check the surveillance footage of the street outside the building to confirm that nobody entered or left. When Zelda couldn't see anyone even walk across the street, she came to the conclusion that Brian and Joe were telling the truth. Yeah. The detective decided to check the secret room once again to figure out how the riddling man had gotten inside. Sometime later, she managed to spot another hidden door. Can you see it too? The bookcase is actually a door. Oh my god. She examined the door to figure out how to open it. She noticed three buttons, but only one could open the door. If Zelda pressed the wrong button, the door would get locked for good, and she would not be able to figure out where it led. Which button should she press? Take a look at the books next to the buttons. One of the titles is meaningless, while the others make sense. That must be an anagram, a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of another. When you rearrange the letters in the title, you'll get the second button. Hmm. Detective Zelda pressed it, and the bookcase door opened. The woman saw a narrow hallway with stairs leading down. She took a step, and the door closed behind her back. She tried to force it open, but it wouldn't move. The only thing she could do was go down the stairs. She ended up in an underground pit. Inside, there was nothing but a shovel and a sign that showed her that she was around the pit. 
In the hole to the left, there were venomous snakes. The pit on the right was filled with poisonous gas, and on the ground right above her head, there was an angry dog with sharp teeth. What should she do? She should dig upwards. She needs to listen to the sounds the dog makes and wait for the animal to fall asleep. Then she should walk quietly past it. That must be how the riddling man entered and left the room. Detective Zelda didn't want to waste any more time, so she headed to Cafe West. A guy sitting at the table in the corner caught her eye. He looked suspicious. When Detective Zelda started walking towards him, he quickly wrote something on the newspaper he'd been reading. Then he ran away through the back door. Detective Zelda tried to catch him, but failed. She checked the paper and found another note. It said, You're not the mayor, but I'll give him one last chance. It looks like you work for him, so bring me $20 million in cash. We can meet at the building that has the most stories in two hours. What building does the riddling man mean? The library. Of course, Detective Zelda was not going to give him any money. She took an empty bag to trick him into believing she had the cash so that he wouldn't run away. She went to the library. When she entered, she saw the riddling man wearing the same sunglasses and coat. He was waiting for her in the riddle and puzzle books section. Then, suddenly, someone accidentally pushed the woman. She dropped her bag. It fell on the floor and opened. The riddling man saw it was empty and understood that this was just a plan to catch him. He ran away. But he dropped something while escaping. It was a library book, and there was a library card inside. It had three different addresses of three different people who had borrowed the book before. Zelda immediately realized which was the riddling man's address. How did she figure it out? Remember the note the riddling man wrote to her at the cafe? The first address is written by the same person. Detective Zelda had two police officers break into the riddling man's apartment. They found the crowns, but the criminal was gone. For some reason, Detective Zelda felt that she would see the riddling man again. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Two best friends, Emily and Luna, came to a popular and expensive hair salon. At first, the administrator told the girls they had just one available hairstylist. But after making a phone call, she happily announced she had found another hairdresser. Emily and Luna could have their hair done at the same time. But in the process, it dawned on the girls that one of the hairstylists was fake. Which one? Hairstylists are using regular scissors, but instead of hairspray, the one on the left is holding a can of bug spray. Yeah, that's a big clue right there. Mary and her younger brother Alex were mushroom hunting in the forest. They started to quarrel, so Alex got angry and ran away. After several minutes, Mary rushed after him. She was still fuming but also worried. Soon, the girl reached a small river. A man was sitting on the shore. Did you see a teenager here? Mary asked. Yep, he's just taken a boat and made it to the other side. But Mary didn't believe the man. Why? The boat is indeed on the other side, but the paddles are lying next to the man. How could the boy cross the river without them? Three prisoners are sitting at a table having dinner, but one of them is wealthy. Can you guess who it is? It's not the guy with the steak and shrimps. The little tag on his shirt reveals he's a chef, and he likes to prepare a special treat for himself. The guy with the jewels shows that he's well off, but in prison, jewelry is basically worthless. It's the third guy. Wealthy people try to keep a low profile in prison, not to be targeted by others. That's why he doesn't flash any valuable possessions or his status. 
It's Friday, and all the students have gathered in a big lecture hall to take the end of term exam. The teacher has been informed that one student is going to cheat. Can you tell which one? Pay attention to every detail. It's student C. It looks as if he's trying to remember what he's read, but he has all the answers written on his hand. Marta was walking through the park near her home in the evening. It was dark and there was nobody around. Suddenly, someone grabbed her from behind and they bolted away. Marta oh, no. took off after them. She was pretty sure this person was a woman, but she couldn't make out her appearance or clothes. When Marta ran inside, she saw three teachers. The girl looked at them attentively and soon figured out which one of them had taken her bag. Can you do the same? The woman in the middle wouldn't be able to run away with a cast on her leg. The one on the right doesn't have anything in her hands. Where would she hide Marta's bag so quickly? But the woman on the left has a big shopper bag on her shoulder. A real teacher wouldn't need to carry it in the classroom. So she was definitely the one who took the bag. Jonathan sneaked out of the house late in the evening to meet his girlfriend. The teenager thought he was extremely careful and quiet, but his whole family knew about his plan. They were aware the guy would return at midnight, so they decided to make a bet. The one who would see Nathan first when the guy started climbing the fence would be the winner. The prize would be no chores for them for one week. So as to not fall asleep, Nathan's dad switched on the TV. The teen's grandfather settled in the living room to read a book. The grandmother went to the kitchen to make a pizza, and Nathan's mom went to her room, sat down on the floor, and started to meditate. Who's going to be the first to spot Nathan when the time comes? Nathan's mom. Her eyes will be used to the darkness, and she will see better than the others. Look at this picture closely and try to figure out who's from the future. Well, I'm pretty sure there was no flashlights in the Stone Age, so it has to be this guy here. Down in the Sea Kingdom, Stacy met Neptune. He was sitting on his throne, surrounded by three mermaids. Neptune asked Stacy to return the pearl necklace to his wife, who had recently lost it. Luke happened to have found the necklace on the shore. Can you guess which mermaid is Neptune's wife, so Luke can give it back to her? It's the third one. She's the only one who's wearing an engagement ring. Lisa was a famous top model. She was found unconscious in her dressing room during a photo shoot and taken to a hospital. Doctors said she had a severe allergic reaction. But when Lisa came to her senses, she insisted she hadn't eaten anything all day. The model's manager was very concerned and interrogated everyone who'd been around. Lisa's stylist said that she had applied Lisa's makeup and indeed hadn't seen her eat anything. The cleaning lady said she had cleaned the dressing room with organic, non-allergenic products. Lisa's main rival, Nora, said that she'd been watching the shooting all day long. She hadn't noticed anything suspicious. Who's the culprit? It was the stylist. Lipstick was the only thing Lisa could have swallowed that day. In the middle of the night, Dennis woke up because of a loud crash. One of the kids must have been out, but they know they aren't allowed to leave at night. The man went to check on the children. All three of them, Catherine, Ruth, and Larry, seemed to be sleeping peacefully. Look at the kids and try to figure out who sneaked out of the house. It was Ruth. There's a dirty sneaker hidden behind the curtain and several pieces of french fries under her bed. Brenda was traveling by train. It was scorching hot in the carriage. The girl took off her gold bracelet decorated with diamonds and put it on the table in front of her. Several minutes later, the train entered a tunnel and it got pitch dark. When the tunnel was left behind, there was no bracelet on the table. Brenda was shocked. Someone's taken my bracelet. There were just three other people in the compartment. Helen said she'd been sleeping. Rachel was reading a book on her phone, and Gregory had gone to the bathroom even before the train entered the tunnel. Who took the bracelet? No. 
It was Helen. At first, she had her sleeves rolled up, but now they're covering her arms down to the wrists, hiding the bracelet. Sarah bought some ice cream on Saturday, but kept the flavors in secret. When she woke up on Sunday, all the ice cream was gone. She asked everyone in the house if they knew anything about it. James answered he had gone to work early that morning and hadn't seen anything. Mary said she wanted to have the new caramel ice cream in the afternoon. She felt bad she was going to miss it. John didn't even know there was ice cream in the house. But he was looking forward to trying it. Can you figure out who knows something? It's Mary. The ice cream flavors were a secret. She couldn't be sure there was a caramel taste among them. Can you tell who's a real mermaid here? The second one is a guy, so he definitely isn't a mermaid. The girl on the right is chilling in the sun, and she's out of the water. Mermaids wouldn't do that because they dry out in the sun. So the real mermaid must be the one on the left. There were some thefts at the supermarket. There were three cases in total, in January, April, and June. The security camera recorded these videos. The security officer tried to have a closer look and suddenly noticed one detail. After that, the identity of the thief became clear. What did he notice? It was the pregnant woman. The attentive security officer noticed that in January, she looked about six to seven months pregnant. In June, she looked the same. Hmm, seems like it's the mysterious case of the baby bump that was really a canned ham. One day, a thief decided to rob the local bank. He came up with a brilliant plan to dress up as one of the bank tellers and try to sneak into the vault. As he was approaching the vault, he saw a security guard standing right in front of the door. The robber hadn't anticipated this, so he hid and watched the guard carefully when one of the actual bank tellers walked up to the door. The security guard said 12. The worker answered 6 and got in. Then another teller came up to the vault. When the security guard said 6, the person answered 3 and was granted access. The thief nonchalantly walked up to the security guard when the guard said 10. The robber confidently answered 5. He was arrested immediately. So why was the thief's answer wrong and what could he have answered instead? The response has to do with the number of letters in the word. 12 has 6 letters, so the answer is 6. 6, in turn, has 3 letters, so the answer is 3. Well, you can see by now that the robber should have said 3. Looks like he wasn't as brilliant as he thought.